We've already talked about how to categorize matter into different categories, like pure substances or mixtures, and further divide pure substances into elements and compounds. And now we're going to talk about the different states that those pure substances may have. Um, states of matter is one way of phrasing it, and the other word that is sometimes used is phases. So it, they are also known as the phases of matter interchangeably. All right, so there are three basic states of matter, and in a later lesson we will talk about a possible fourth state. But right now we're limiting ourselves to the three basic states, gas, liquid, and solid. Okay, so a gas is, in this case, I'm showing a picture of a diatomic element, but it could be any element or any uh, compound that is in the gas phase. And that has the characteristics that you see individual units or atoms or molecules. And there's always space between them. Except, of course, when they happen to collide with one another momentarily. They also expand to fill the entire container. So whatever container you have a gas in, it will expand until it fills that container. And further, they are easily compressible. You can squish the container and you will squish the gas. All right, so contrast that with liquids and solids, which are all considered condensed phases. They're more condensed. They don't take up the entire container necessarily. And so with liquids, the atoms or molecules are condensed. But, they're, but they still form. Ratio of equivalent values. Okay, so ratio is another way of saying a fraction. All right, so equivalent values. We learned from the previous video that 100 centimeters is one meter. Centa means 100 of something equals the base unit. So that's an equivalency, but to make it a ratio, we turn it into a fraction. We say 100 centimeters over one meter. The way to say that is really 100 centimeters per one meter. The line means per. 100 centimeters per one meter. But we could also say it the opposite way. We can flip it over and say there's one meter per 100 centimeters. So the amount on top and the amount on bottom are actually equivalent, but they're using different units. So those are conversion factors. All right, so let's use that in an example where we need to convert. Let's say we needed to convert 1.5 centimeters to meters. Okay, so the conversion factor is the one that has the units you started with and the units you want in that ratio. Okay, so we take, we go back to the steps at, top, at the top, start with the number to be converted and express it as a fraction. All right, the number to be converted is 1.5 centimeters. It is not a fraction, but we can always express any number as a fraction by putting it over one. Putting it over one changes it to none. Okay, so let's put parentheses around it because we're going to multiply it next by a conversion factor. Multiply by appropriate conversion factors to get the desired units. All right, so we need one of these two conversion factors. And since the last goal is to cancel units, the way to cancel is have the same thing on the top and the bottom. So the only way to get centimeters on the bottom is to use this one. Okay, this one would have centimeters on the top. That won't work. So this is the one we use. And we put the 100 centimeters on the bottom and the one meter on the top. And then we can cancel the units. Centimeters cancel with centimeters. What we're left with is meters. Yay, because that's what we want. And then we do the math part. Multiply the tops, 1.5. Multiply the bottoms, 1 times 100, and then divide. So it'll end up being 1.5 divided by 100 because multiplying and dividing by one doesn't change a number. 
All right, so let's do that. We get 0 0.015 meters. Another way to express that would be in scientific notation, which would be 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. Either answer would be acceptable. Well, let's look at a couple of common household pumps. You may or may not recognize these. Um, and generally, you need some kind of a pump to create a vacuum. So here's um, the one on the left is a bicycle pump. The one on the right is a wine bottle pump. All right, so let's look at the bicycle pump. You may be more familiar with that one. Um, when you use a bicycle pump, you attach it to your bicycle tire and you start pumping molecules into the tire. Okay, so if this box represents the inside of your tire, so let's draw that, then actually the box has more molecules in it than the surrounding area. Here's your atmosphere around, like in your garage, and here is the um, bicycle tire has more molecules, so this is just air. So in this case, you're pumping molecules into a container. It creates a higher pressure. So this is not a vacuum. Okay, a vacuum was an area with less matter than an atmospheric pressure. So a bicycle tire does not create a vacuum. However, a wine pump, okay, a wine pump is put onto a wine bottle. After you've had some of the wine, you want the wine to not react with oxygen molecules in the air, so you try to pump some of them out. So you create, uh, you pump molecules out. So this is the inside of your wine bottle, and the outside is still the air. So compared to the air, the pump on a wine bottle will pull molecules out. Okay, it pumps molecules out. 